Um, my home state of Georgia has been named the best state to do business in some 10 years in a row. Um, we are a right to work state, which Mr. Alcorn, that means that if you have a good job uh, and you want to keep that job, that you do not have to pay union dues to keep that job. Um, what this administration is attempting to do and has been attempting to do along with every democratic administration is to apply uh, the PRO Act throughout the entire country, which means that Georgia would no longer uh, be able to have a right to work law. Uh, the modern workforce is entrepreneurial and employees are, are competing for this modern workforce are very innovative in their approach to recruit and retain uh, top talent. Uh, Mr. Delu, today's discussion has focused on the tactics that union use to undermine workers' rights to a secret ballot and limit free speech during the unionization process. Uh, my bill, the Employment Rights Act, contains several provisions that promote free and fair union elections, including guaranteeing secret ballot elections. Can you discuss how the Employee Rights Act helps protect workers from coercive union tactics? Uh, yes, Representative, and first of all, thank you for your leadership on that bill. Um, as you mentioned, one key provision of the Employee Rights Act is the protection of the secret ballot, which, as I said earlier, is the gold standard for union elections. It allows workers to make their choice outside of the public eye, free from any potential coercion or intimidation. But the Employee Rights Act goes further than that. Um, it also requires workers to opt into any union political spending. So right now, workers who are hoping to opt out of that have to go through a somewhat arcane process to exercise a right under a case called Communication Workers v. Beck, whereas an opt-in system would remove that burden from workers, but still allow workers who support union political activity to spend as they so choose. Um, it also enshrines the independent contractor standard. That would be a much more clear standard. Uh, our current independent contractor standard is relatively subjective and murky, which is very difficult for, as you put it, entrepreneurs and small businesses to be able to comply with. Um, it also clarifies a joint employer standard to ensure that when a unionization election happens at a franchise level, it's a truly representative local decision as opposed to a top-down ap uh, approach uh, adopted by the overarching franchisor. Um, in addition, my bill, the Truth Employment Act, ensures employers uh, are not required to hire salts who enter the work, uh, the hiring process for the purpose of unionizing a workplace or to put uh, the non-union company out of business. These salts are paid union agents and have no obligation to disclose their union affiliation with their employer or coworkers. In contrast, if an employer hires a consultant to discuss the impacts of unionization with workers, the employer must disclose his or her identity, compensation, and activities. The consultant is also required to disclose sim similar information. Your written testimony mentions recent polling on the subject of union assaults. Can you discuss the results? Um, yes, I can. So this poll was conducted, I believe, in 2022. And it talked, or 2023 actually, and it requested public feedback on salting. What it found is that 75% of those who were polled found, wanted equal disclosure uh, from employer and unions on salting. 59% thought that elections featuring union salt should be thrown out entirely. And 62% thought that employers should be able to ask in a job interview if an applicant was a salt. So uh, the bottom line is the polling showed that public, the public or overwhelmingly favors an organic, free choice over a manipulated or manufactured one. Yep, and, and again, I've said it over and over again, the American people just want choice here and not to be forced. Uh, Mr. Alcorn, uh, to follow up on that response, uh, do you believe salting is deceptive, and what is your opinion of this practice? Um, yes, I do believe it's very deceptive. I think there's no question about that. Um, I think if people want to organize, they should do it in an official capacity, not in a deceptive or um, secretive way. I think workers deserve to know who they're working with and what their intentions are. That's workers' rights. I want to thank you and to reiterate, my Employee Rights Act provides essential protections for workers' rights, choices, and freedoms, including ensuring political and privacy protections and guaranteeing secret ballot elections. 